So for this project, I started with a 12 by 12 inch frame. And although this is not the frame that I used, I do prepare all of my frames the same. I remove the backing, I remove the glass, I remove all of the clips, and then I take regular Elmer's glue and I put it around the perimeter of the back of the frame where the glass would sit. Then I replace the glass and take Elmer's glue and put it around the perimeter one more time. This serves two purposes. It helps to hold the glass in place and it helps to prevent resin leaks when you put resin on the other side. This does need to dry overnight, sometimes for up to 24 hours, depending on how much glue you use. Next, I took Celestial Glass, which is fire glass that I picked up on Amazon, an artist loft iridescent medium, and took a big spoonful of it and mixed it in with the fire glass. Then I took and spread it out on nonstick paper. You can use wax paper or parchment paper. And after I had it all spread out, I took an iridescent glitter and sprinkled it all over it. Now this is optional. And then what I did was I took a couple pieces of paper and fit them to be the same size as the glass on the frame, glass in the frame. Next I drew a bunny's head and here you can see I used the circle to help me because I'm not that great of a drawer and I put the two um, bunny ears at the very top then I taped it to the back of the glass. Once that was complete, I started putting on my fire glass. And then I moved it out of the way for a minute to put some Elmer's glue down. And I use the Elmer's glue because it just helps to hold everything in place uh, so that the glass doesn't move around as much because it can get very tedious if you put a piece on and everything shifts out of the circle there. Next, I find a couple bunny eyes that, from my little rock collection that I've picked up from either the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. And then I just continue on putting all the fire glass on, one piece at a time, fitting together like a little puzzle. And if you are going to use the Elmer's glue, you need to use the clear Elmer's glue, not the regular Elmer's glue, because the clear Elmer's glue will dry perfectly clear and even looking at it from the back, um, you won't be able to notice it. So here I'm just showing you what the iridescent glitter looks like on top of the iridescent medium. And that really is optional. I've done other projects before where I just put the Artist Loft iridescent medium on and not the glitter, but this time I put the glitter on. So next I move on to the ears. And after I finish this one ear, I want the other ear to look just like it. So I go ahead and I cut out the outline for that. Um, and I go ahead and tape that underneath because the the second ear that I drew didn't look like the first one. Like I said, I'm not that great at symmetry or drawing for that matter. And so I just went ahead and taped that under there so that they both looked the same. And then I just went ahead and filled in the other ear. After I was done with both ears, I went ahead and mixed up a concoction of artist glossed varnish. You can use any kind of a clear varnish and this very light pink Rolio pigment. It's mica powder and I made a very thin consistency of it. And I just went ahead and painted in the center of both ears and the nose of the bunny. And like I said, I think I put a couple um, coats on, but you want to make it real, real thin. And um, it'll be transparent if you make it thin. I guess I should say it will be translucent, not transparent. The other thing is you could probably thin down some pink paint and um, get a similar effect from this. Next, I got out my vitrograph glass. Vitrograph glass is long strands of glass that I bought on Etsy, and I used my nipper tool to cut them to length for the whiskers. And I just, I just thought this was adorable. And I never thought I could have used a little bit of that pink for the cheeks, but I guess that's fine. I guess I could always change it after. But I used it for the uh, whiskers, and I also used it to create the mouth and for the eyebrows. And I think he turned out so cute. 
and everything that I use in this video I will link under the description when you click on um, show more it'll come up all my links to everything that I've used just so you know at the last minute I did end up putting the painters tape around the perimeter of the back and this of course is to help prevent any resin leaks and uh, the resin I'm using for this project is Art Resin, the one-to-one -one ratio resin that mix, is mixed slowly in a cup for three minutes. And you can see here I found my little silicone uh, stirrer. I had gotten this in with a uh, package of, oh, some measuring, silicone measuring cups, and also this little spreader. And I just found it. I've had it probably for about six months, but I lost it in my cupboards. <laughs> and I pulled it out the other uh, the other day. So anyway, this uh, little silicone spreader is really neat. And also this uh, silicone stir stick because I don't have to use the spoons then so much. I can just wipe this off and reuse it. Anyway, I poured the resin over the glass first and kind of smoothed it around and made sure each of the pieces of vitrograph glass were covered so that it would stick to the bunny rabbit and then um, went around the, the perimeter and up into the corners and made sure everything was covered with the resin. Then I used my little kitchen torch and got rid of all the bubbles and um, it's important you get down eye level and look for hairs and sediment in there and you can use a toothpick to move things around or uh, get things out of the resin that shouldn't be in there. And this has to sit on a flat level surface overnight. After 12 hours, you can touch it. And after about uh, 72 hours, it's totally cured. This has to set at temperatures between 72 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. All resins are different. You need to read the directions for the resin that you are using. Hey everyone, <laughs> my little bunny's done. This was super easy. I cannot tell you how easy it was. Just uh, put the picture behind it and follow along with your, um, your uh, painted glass and just turned out so cute. And this vitrograph glass is so cool because you get it in all sorts of shapes. Now, um, it can be kind of pricey. It's, oh, shoot, it's like $16 for four ounces, which doesn't sound like a lot. But I have a package that I just opened here and I wanted to show it to you. And it comes in all different colors. So I'm going to put the camera down so you can see. <laughs> And uh, I'll bring it up a little bit. It is really cool. It comes in just all squigglies. This is kind. Of, this is light, so it might be kind of hard to see. But I'll pull it up a little bit. So that is uh, the four ounces. But this, um, the thicker part, you would cut with your nippers. If it gets to a real thin part and your nippers won't, uh, you know, because they don't come all the way together, won't get it, you can just snap it with your fingers at the thin part. It's, it's real, super easy to do. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to show you that quick. So it, it's really cool. It is a little bit pricey, but it's um, you can use it for all different applications. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. I love to hear um, from you. I love to see what you're making. My email is in my under my about information. And um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. If you um, enjoy the channel or want to be notified of future videos, go ahead and subscribe. And I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching.